love about Chips Juice gatherings is you don't see everybody just standing around popping up the bar. They're all coming to, uh, to listen to the people talking. We've got Gary Evans coming up next, who I first encountered, what, must be a couple of years ago now. Yeah. Talking about evidence for Atlantis. That's true. And uh, the tent was absolutely bulging by the time he'd finished, and it was a big tent. But here today, he's going to talk about moving into the path of intuition, mm -hmm. using the tools of ancient ritual. That's right. Uh, so That's kind of the latest work. Gary yeah. Evans. Thank you. Take it away, sir. Yeah, that was 2000. Over the moon now. Uh, out of the ordinary. Yeah. yeah. So that was before I'd visited a lot of these sites and done five trips to Egypt. And so my role as the day job is the agent to lots of these authors, moving around the world, helping to organise conferences, up to kind of 500, 600, 700 people on alternative topics. I'm kind of working behind the scenes on tours and conferences, engaging with the alternative media, and, and so it is a very different picture, on, I would say, on the inside to the perception I had looking at things on the internet. Completely different. So I've tried to um, really get into what's relevant for my, my development. Um, I want to progress, make progress, um, increase my awareness of the world and the kind of the problems and what positive contribution can I make. Um, hopefully one of those today would be to share some of those things I think have been helping me. Probably some of the things certain people will know and other things some of you will know, but hopefully some of these techniques will give you new tools to, to think about or, or use for your own development. And um, so where I've really got to is the understanding of our modern rational mind, the mind that we're educated to use, that we use for computers, we use at work and the, the kind of intuitive mind that our ancestors were, were working with, where we connect to something greater, whether you want to call that the universe or the kind of God mind, the collective unconscious. And I think that's the space that some of the geniuses that we've got in our history books have been tapping into, where there's this sort of deep truth, because there are certain laws that govern the, the universe and the world, and our science is still trying to catch up with an understanding of the whole. I see us really as children. Because if we look at um, the entirety of how big we know the universe is, and then there's planet Earth, and we've made it to the moon, I mean, we've hardly covered, a, a, haven't even covered 1% of what's out there. So can you imagine how evolved as a species we would be if we'd explored all of those planets and solar systems out there? I mean, there's so much for us to know. So we've, we're barely uh, babies in the grand scheme of things. And it does, um, time in Egypt has given me a kind of perspective, I would say, on my role in that scheme. And one of the, the things, the kind of epiphanies I had in the Great Pyramid was that if people that have made it to an event like this, we've done well, because despite all of the distractions of the modern world, computers, the TV, what's being beamed at us on the news and the, the mainstream channels, we've managed to keep our minds open to other possibilities that there are things that, that our scientists don't understand and so this epiphany was well you've done well you've understood that self-development is important and that you can progress on the material world but Gary don't get too carried away and then it kind of showed me this ladder going off into eternity and it was like the spiritual progress ladder you could call it and then there was me at the bottom of the ladder and the first rung of the ladder and I basically had my foot on it so it's like you've done well you've made it onto the ladder that's the, the fundamental important thing but don't think you're anything particularly special because your potential is beyond your perception so much more to learn than I've learned to date hopefully I've learned something worth sharing and how my personal path started where well, I went from Gary who was in IT recruitment um, to Gary kind of the the conference and tour organiser was by working with intentions and for quite a while I was kind of sending out this intention I wanted to help others and make a positive contribution to the world and um, and also I sent out this intention that if there are souls or people that I can help um, then please send them towards me and I will, will do my best that I can and at the time I thought that would just be a few friends in my sort of sphere of influence but as it's turned out 
the interviews and things that I arrange. I mean, I've done a lot with Lucy um, that's talking in the other tent now. Maria also helped spread her work. So these kind of hidden gems um, that really have seeds of truth or something that's helped me, I now promote their messages to the world because I think they have valuable contributions to make. And I deal with like coast to coast AM in the States, which is certainly the world, uh, Western world's biggest alternative radio show, three million listeners a week. So the work I'm doing is starting to sort of touch up to tens of millions, and that's without covering the History Channel's Ancient Aliens show, which they reckon they've got 100 million people watching it. But it's not, um, it's not the scope of the, the people that you inspire, it's just that you, you're trying to do your bit. So, what I've been following, I don't, can anyone actually read that back? Is it just dark the screen back there? Otherwise I'll have to read it out. So these are some of the things that I've been, been using and would certainly encourage other people to look at if they're not already. So yoga, uh, union, uh, the mind and the body. I mean, you can't intellectually explain the total benefits of yoga as a system because it just helps your development um, brings inner peace and stillness and this sort of trickles down into your personal life at work your interactions with others sort of growing empathy connection to the world and animals I mean so many things um, but I'm happy to talk to people about yoga because it is important the type of yoga that you go to um, because a lot of gyms and things are just kind of focusing on the physical side but the real purpose is to, for deep relaxation which is how we enter to number two here, meditation. Um, and I've kind of termed it, it allows me to connect into the stillness. Um, and there's certainly many parallels of the deep meditative state to what we do at night when we're sleeping. That gives us a chance to kind of reintegrate and put things to bed from yesterday so we're not constantly fussing over them the next day, um, unless it's something really traumatic, which it keeps coming up. Um, but this sort of deep relaxation definitely settles us down in the, the body and it's a good place to recharge so if you can be conscious when you connect to the stillness rather than unconscious and asleep it has amazing um, benefits and also expansion I would say helps us expand. Tai Chi and Qi Gong um, I mean who does any of these practices here yoga Tai Chi exactly I mean that's why I, I would expect some of us to have been already practicing with them and similar benefits, moving energy in the body, which is something I was, was talking about in relation to ancient science. These practices help us to tune in to sort of subtle changes and be, be kind of aware of our state of mind and um, sort of invaluable. And mantras, um, I work a lot with the Tibetan mantras, the kind of recitation of these different sounds. And um, <clears throat> we'll see at the end, perhaps if we can do some some toning together because it could be an interesting experiment if we can use the power of group sound here. We can raise the vibration of this tent, that's the plan. So that's one side of it. And then uh, nutrition of course. Um, I was talking about the quality of water in my, my talk. So if we can actually charge our own water and there's various ways, ways of doing that. Um, but I just wanted to make people aware that this is something we can do. And that certainly helps our awareness. Organic food, yeah, now animal welfare, <coughs> animal cruelty is a big, big problem, and just the kind of unconscious treatment of animals, not respecting their, them as sentient creatures. Um, green juice, I'm a huge fan of uh, green juice. I had mine today. I made a batch of it. You can't actually see, but that was my preparation. I, I've sort of taken it to extremes. I normally have about 30 different ingredients now. Um, but one of the, the key things that I like about green juice is stinging nettles. And I think I'm addicted to stinging nettles. <laughs> this, because the way that they act, they're like a leech plant, so they suck up the minerals from the soil. That's one of the things that they do. And my intuition guided me that that compound that stings us actually helps to open up the third eye or, or kind of attunes us to our psychic abilities. And I was talking to, to a lady, she was called Herbal Emma, and she, she teaches uh, foraging. And she said, well, it's quite, 
profound really because we've got stinging nettles everywhere I mean they're very easy for us to find and it's not just England I mean worldwide they're pretty easy to find and um, it's like it's something right under our nose so the great mother or Gaia is um, growing stinging nettles abundantly because they do help humans and there's a lot of us so there's a lot of stinging nettles but most people just say ah stinging nettles weed so it's like what we really need we're just throwing it away and and that's quite a good analogy for a lot of the things that, that people do we might just dismiss something because for some reason it doesn't um, fit with our understanding now so my normal advice is is don't dismiss something out of hand unless it's something somebody's recommending that's really offensive but if you feel drawn to something uh, give it a try and, and then make your mind up through through learning that way and that's definitely how I think I'm helping myself and that's uh, so earthing bare feet on the earth um, and I'm just in the process of writing an article um, about how to visit ancient sites and kind of giving these these tools in the, a bit of a deeper way to the guests on our tours and just to bring it into more public awareness and grounding um, is is something that's kind of growing in in popularity at the moment there's a good documentary coming out called grounding um, based in a town in Alaska this this chap there suddenly got into grounding and he was I mean he was taking it to further extremes than I am he had sort of snow around his house and they had, it was like one of those wooden houses on stilts and he was going underneath the house and, and grounding in that way and kind of covering the surf completely in soil. But the main um, purpose of it is we get this kind of electrical charge in our systems and if we're cut off from uh, beautiful grass like that, um, the charge in our body is not, it kind of, I guess, gets worse and worse and help stops us from uh, clarity of thought. So it's very healthy, um, to ground ourselves to the planet and also there's this kind of interchange of perhaps um, sort of different electrons, free radicals and things so it can be uh, amazing for health benefits and in this this particular documentary there was a guy that was in a wheelchair for sort of 25 years and, and they started to get him to ground and he did get the feeling coming back into his legs and it showed him starting to, to walk and um, I think the most illuminating thing that they did, there's a lot of doctors involved in this research and they had a slide of blood under the microscope and then they had another slide of blood under the microscope which they then connected the grounding wire to, I'm not quite sure how they did it. So you could see the, the blood on the first slide hardly uh, moving at all and as soon as they connected the grounding wire to the second slide all of a sudden it starts to move at this sort of increased pace. So by grounding our bodies this is kind of demonstrating to me that it is um, lowering our blood pressure, which is a big problem, certainly in the Western world. We're all very stressed and kind of highly strung. So it can help lower your blood pressure and, and reduce stress. And, and again, after about two or three days of being disconnected now, it's almost like my feet want to be connected to the planet. Um, and then when we're using like Tai Chi and becoming aware of the energy movement in our bodies, when you get your feet on the ground, you start to feel the interaction and it, and it just feels good. I think that's the main test. It makes me feel happy being connected. So I would encourage everyone to do so. And of course, beaches are a great place to do that. And um, so, what are we really talking about uh, in terms of spiritual vi development? Is uh, raising our vibration because I think it's it's quite a common term. We hear that term. Well, let's raise our vibration and be better people. But how do you go about raising your vibration? Um, so these were just a few of the things. And as I mentioned in my lecture, these are subtle things, so very subtle effects. But when you put them together, you get a quite a profound impact, which is why I wanted the, um, the Palo Santo and I kind of got the essences and things. Um, Epsom salts is another one, uh, magnesium sulfate, my yoga teacher recommends. Because the body has difficulty assimilating um, magnesium from our food, but you can absorb it through the skin, so it's very relaxing. I think um, it's probably normally recommended, like if you've got an achy muscle or something, but it also kind of centers you and, and settles you. And if you suffer from bad uh, cramps, then Epsom salts will be a good friend for you. It really has, a, I used to have a lot of cramps, and now um, they've gone. 
but if it starts to come back, if I haven't had a good soak in a bath of Epsom salts, but my cramps coming back, I know that I need to have a bath and that will get rid of them again. And, um, and I have a, a client in Glastonbury, she, she deals in uh, colour therapy. Um, I mean, getting natural fibres isn't particularly easy for us. That's still an area that I need to improve on. I've made some, some movement in that direction. But the, the colour of our clothing, what we wear, impacts how we feel. Darker colours kind of uh, lowers the vibration. I've gone with my green heart chakra colour today. So when I'm uh, hosting the tours, I have the kind of chakra coloured t-shirt range and, I, and they normally spot me easily then in the desert. <laughs> I've got bright colours on. <laughs> And uh, it's just, yeah, just kind of represents how I'm feeling when I go into the Great Pyramid, a green or a purple, um, setting the intention for, for heart expansion or, or kind of um, expanding my awareness. Definitely has a profound impact on the, the people around us, brighter coloured clothing. And I've seen that firsthand in Egypt. I was walking around a lot of time with a friend and normally the little girls and, and the boys that, that wanted a bit of change would go straight to her. And as soon as I put this t-shirt on, they immediately went all straight to me. So it can be expensive, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it makes you feel good. So yeah, be mindful of the kind of colours that you, you wear. Um, and that's, of course, a big one. Um, money. <coughs> I mean, it's driving our world. We live in a monetary economy still. Um, difficult to get away from it but if it's our primary motivation it can get in the way of uh, synchronicities and in fact you might end up getting money if you go after synchronicities because if you're working or exploring in areas that are close to your soul's purpose then the things tend to start flowing into your life that you need but if we are only focused on the money we might be blocking our own um, development and one of the things my early earliest client from California said to me and it was if you're getting an opportunity that comes into your life something that perhaps scares you a bit if you were to take it but but you feel that it's a good thing to do if you did turn that opportunity down you might not ever have that opportunity come around again or it might delay your progress so even if something perhaps is a bit scary before we turn these things down we should should give it a good thorough thinking about and if it's possible to follow our hearts then I would certainly recommend people to do that and um, this is I think we, no way that we can argue here really. consciousness is changing around the planet and predominantly due to the internet um, what 150 years ago if we wanted to communicate with people in Australia perhaps we were collaborating on a scientific project it's going to take a very long time for a message to get to Australia and, and then them to re sort of send the reply. I mean, we're probably talking months. But now I can post on Facebook and have a reply from Australia in two seconds. So our ability to collaborate with like-minded people around the planet is absolutely incredible. And so this is speeding up consciousness because I might be collaborating on the talk or something with someone in Australia, say. They give me an idea and then I can share it here. I mean, the transfer of information is, is amazing. So we, uh, we are here at a pivotal time. The tools that we have, um, and of course we're seeing it with groups like Avas and these uh, online petitions, and, and they are having a measurable effect. They, I've signed the online petitions, and then we see the headlines on the BBC that Avas have stopped things happening that are detrimental to our planet. So the, the kind of things that they're doing, the trailblazing, we are all capable of taking this power into our own hands and joining with like-minded people, collaboration. Um, what's in our heart? Why did we come here? What's our contribution? Because at some point on the spiritual path, it isn't good enough to help yourself. It's like, wow, the world really is a magical place. I'm starting to see the magic again, like through the childlike innocence. And I missed it for a long time, but it's something that means a lot to me. So if I could try and share that with other people again to, to awaken it. That's a, a true blessing. And, and we want to all go along for the ride. I mean, we're all, all connected. That's what I was talking about in there, that we are all, all connected. I saw it when I was over the other side and I had the group out of body experience in Egypt. It's, it's not just a nice idea. We are all intimately connected and down here for a purpose. Some of our uh, brothers and sisters are just acting from unconscious behavior, very root 
chakra based uh, greed and things but for people here on on the uh, sort of spirit, spiritual development or self uh, personal growth we do have the tools to move beyond um, the way that they're behaving and in fact it is I think is our responsibility to, to show them the error of their ways because they're still um, very sleepy a lot of the time and this is um, yeah, so, so fear-based uh, consciousness, which is um, a general problem. I can't go here because something might happen. I mean, we spend a lot of time worrying about things that might happen. I read recently, um, it's normally the things that you didn't worry about that hit you out of left field, and they're the things you should have really worried about. So uh, again, yoga can help with that. Um, don't spend too much time in the future. That's one sort of human trait. We're worrying about things in the future predominantly that aren't going to happen or we're worrying about things that we could have done better in the past but generally there's um, very little we can do about past things so it's important to be present um, here present with you today and looking at a lot of smiling faces and a few bemused ones but it's good to be here nonetheless and, um, and I've certainly learned about heart-based um, consciousness I would say from Egypt to uh, these other sites and also um, the circle of people I surround myself with it does make a big difference on our state of mind um, when I've still got a few friends that are kind of constantly worrying or they like to be there um, to talk to me about their problems but there's a kind of healthy level where it gets to what's called an energy vampire where they're just kind of <laughs> sucking our energy and it can be very tiring and um, I know previously, I mean, I've, I've had those kind of encounters and it's taken a few days or a week perhaps to re recover my energy levels. So now I'm more of, okay, well, I'll, I'll stay in my heart and perhaps I just need to listen. Um, particularly if they've shown me that if I give them advice, they don't listen to it anyway. I mean, what's the point of pulling my heart? But we can listen. Um, and if they start kind of getting really emotional, don't take it on board ourselves because that's not healthy for us. More of just see this kind of stress that they're projecting flowing past us and don't get too involved and then that's where these kind of tools like the sound bowl the incense and I've got essences so we can uh, purify our um, energy body after these kind of encounters and, and like when I go into London that's quite a nice up, sort of uplifting it's quite an open space here we're surrounded by nature but going into the heart of a city like London which is a really sort of dense consciousness and the kind of worst case scenario is all crammed in on the tube and uh, I mean I would say I was a, sort of above average sensitive but I can cope with that um, in a place like this I can kind of see my aura expanded and I can be more open and sharing but if I'm going to go on the tube in London I'm going to kind of pull my aura in so I'm not dragging it through because I kind of see it as this sphere around me um, and then have a nice cleanse when I get home and um, go about my business. And um, this is something, and the reason why it was good to do a kind of a practical demonstration, because just giving people intellectual information is not really the best way to learn. I've learned through my experiences at ancient sites and at yoga and things, something that's very personal to me. So a workshop where we can use the bowl and people can feel this sound resonance which is the same as at the ancient sites and just to see how it feels is um, I think a better contribution to me because um, if I'm just going to give you intellectual information you might have this kind of information and I've got to try and join the dots between the two but how you're really going to join the dots and how your reality changes perhaps to a more positive um, view I think that's one of the things I've been working on myself yes there's challenges here but we can surround ourselves with good people and we can uh, take charge of things. And that was why are they relevant really is what that slide's asking us. Can ancient sites still help us today? Um, <coughs> and I definitely feel that, that part of my mission is, is to bring ancient sites into people's spiritual awareness. Not everybody needs to go to Egypt. I'm not a firm believer of that at all. Egypt calls people there. I'm booking them in all the time and, and finding out why they're travelling from around the world to Egypt. But where have you felt called to? Is it Peru? Do you come here because you want to go and see Stonehenge over the weekend? We've got amazing sites throughout the, the UK. 
but if there's somewhere that you felt called to I would, would encourage you to get there when, when money or time allows because it might just be that the energy of the area or the, the journey there helps you to, to gain an understanding in, in surprising and positive ways. But it's certainly fair to say that um, as we work on our sensitivity, which is what we're, we're talking about with these kind of things, that we can then start to feel these subtle finer forces at ancient sites that, that, people, um, that most people were not aware of because they're kind of densely rooted here. And, and also they've closed their mind off to the possibility that these things exist. In my time traveling around the world, I've, I'm definitely happy with the idea that there are strong energies, there's palpable atmospheres, um, and you can compare places in nature. I love being by the sea or mountains or walking the forest. Um, and you can certainly, I've been working on going around some older forests recently and um, there is a kind of collective consciousness, you could say, of the forest if, if it's um, been there for quite a while. And it is something that you can <coughs> very subtly feel in a similar way that you can very subtly feel kind of mass consciousness of flocks of birds or animals. But you need to, to be in a very still place to become aware of these things. So that was what I've kind of termed the energetic callings, where we feel called to help our spiritual involvement because subconsciously or unconsciously we know what's best for us that's why we don't need to listen too much to people standing at the front because yeah. you already know all the answers but a little reminder now and again doesn't normally hurt me um, and then then it was just really about um, the kind of experiences I, I called it um, my soul's evolution, how these experiences I've, I've shared with others around the world have made me aware that in fact reality is far stranger than we've been, we've been told. Um, the kind of experiences that I've been having remind me that the people that are writing these things in Hollywood and making all of these TV shows, I mean they must have been having these similar kind of experiences to me. I'm not the first person in human history. So it's rather than uh, looking at the screen and thinking, ha, huh, well they've got a vivid imagination. I mean, and then you start to sort of look at Gene Roddenberry, Star Trek creator, and I've kind of been um, moving around in circles and knew him, and these, these people are having these kind of experiences, but, but sometimes they don't let the public know the kind of root of their uh, motivations. But, but I'm comfortable that reality is a lot, a lot stranger than most of us think, and probably than I still think, and um, it's out there for us to find when we're ready. So that was it. That was just the kind of the, the tool side. I didn't want to sort of drag that out too much. But, but at the same time, I wanted to ask uh, if anyone else would like to suggest other ideas. I mean, it's supposed to be a workshop, so it's sort of group collaboration. So now's the time to offer suggestions on what helps you um, in these areas. Have anyone got any offers? Uh you. Uh, the idea of moving into Aquarius from Pisces, you know, I think there was a lot of focus on individuals in the past, like kind of, um, you know, having one communion with the, you know, transcending themselves personally, whereas now it seems to be a group kind of um, activity which mm. is kind of progressing us more quickly. Um, it's not it's something which I've explored that much personally, but I'm kind of feeling that that's what I'm gravitating towards, you know, groups of people. You know, to kind of, uh, you know, for channeling or whatever it is, you know, to come up with a <coughs> Well, I've given that thought, um, that subject, quite a lot of thought because of these group experiences that we've had in Egypt. Um, I mean, there's one kind of theory that if we are the universe trying to understand itself, that we needed this period of separation from source and all that as individuals to learn that lesson. Um, maybe the experiment didn't go quite to plan but because of the destruction of the environment I mean it's not sustainable but I, I definitely feel it's a time to come back together where we we can help each other um, and as hopefully we can test with the power of group sound with that work together we can raise our awareness and really reach these amazing places um, and, and 
the places that we've, I think, reached because of the male and female interaction as well. Um, I mean, we could talk a lot about the male kind of consciousness that's pervaded this planet and is still uh, raining terrible destruction on the environment. But the, the balance on all levels, the interaction between the, the men and the ladies and, and of ourselves needs to come back. So I think by using the sound and the female voice and the male voice, and then kind of blending into this place of harmony, we can definitely um, make for some interesting feelings. Well, I'll come to you next, sir. I've got one. Yeah. You have to project me. Yeah. Okay. All of those things you said are really um, not only really effective, but they're actually quite easy and cheap to access mm. as well. It's a matter of attention. One of them that really struck me was the colour of what you're wearing and how it affects you and other people. And I moved on from there to realising that how we're communicating with each other sets up all sorts of dynamics and I, I came to one or two conclusions which are working really well for me. Mm. One of which is that if you haven't got anything useful to say, say nothing. Yeah, um, that's a if, good one. The person you're listening to, um, say you are in the position where you're just listening because you don't want to take any of it on. If they say, make sure they know you're paying attention and if they say anything that's supportable, then support it. Mm. And the other thing about if you haven't got anything useful to say, say nothing, is that only put good stuff out there because the stuff that's coming back is what you're putting out first. And those three things have proved to be really useful guides to me because mm. you can call on them instantly. You know, when unexpected things happen, they're good ground rules Definitely. to add to all yours. Well, I, I did, I think I kind of had that point about. Um, because it's not only what I mean, what we're watching and putting into our consciousness, it does does play on our um, mind or our subconscious. So I mean, I can't watch horror films like that. I mean, uh, and I used to like action films a lot, but they're so gory and just seeing this kind of maiming of each other. I mean, is that really the world we want to be living in? No, I don't want to see that kind of stuff. I want the opposite to that. Um, and yeah, certainly what we say. Which comes, I mean, one of the subjects I could have discussed was um, how yoga and um, stress and anger, there's an interaction. So my yoga teacher normally says that we carry a lot of stress and anger in this part of the body, in the liver and kidney. And probably people in the audience, if you get stressed, you start feeling this tightness here. Um, so some of the yoga postures are designed to kind of squeeze this area of the body because there is a, com a connection with the energy that's contained in this stress and anger and how we can work on our meridian system, the energy body system. And so um, I used to be a very angry person, that's what I would have called myself as a young man, and so angry when I was at my school days that it used to scare me. And this was something um, that seemed to be in the family. And I thought, oh, well maybe that's just passed down and I just became an angry person because of my, um, my parents. But it wasn't until I started yoga and I started to see this anger that used to bubble out when somebody would be confrontational, all of a sudden I could just sort of bear witness to their anger as they came at me. And perhaps I did do something wrong. But instead of reacting, because I was like, okay, you're being angry to me, so I will be angry in return. Instead of that kind of old approach, all of a sudden I was able to sort of bear witness, understand, and then look at my own actions, because I'm not an angel. But if I've made a mistake, I can apologize and sort of diffuse the situation. And the first time that I ever did that was, was just seeing these two people that were very angry about something sort of inconsequential. And I kind of diffused the situation and we moved past it. I mean, that was a lot of power. I suddenly had got beyond this, this power that used to frighten me that was gonna come out. And I haven't seen that, that Gary since I started yoga. I haven't got to that angry place anymore. And so the outbursts that people that I used to do, used to push people away, it's gone because I, I see it as I've got this anger and stress out of my system. So, so if somebody thinks of themselves as an angry person, I would say that is a person carrying a lot of stress and anger and they haven't been educated at school that they've got things that they can do to get this anger and stress out of their system. And that would have been one of the handiest things they could have ever taught me at school. And then they could have given me the tools. It's like, okay, well, yeah. if you're with these angry people that are projecting their stress and anger onto you, you need to have some kind of cleansing ritual afterwards Otherwise, you're going to be carrying their stuff around for the next week. But no, I didn't. I had to find that one out the hard way. But at least I could try and uh, highlight it. 
So yeah, if that does uh, ring a bell, um, forward bends, or anything that's kind of bending here, um, twists are very good, and um, inversions where you have your legs in the air, and if you've got, I mean, you have to be careful with your back, so it's a very personal thing, but you can just lie up against the wall with your legs in a kind of V shape or straight up, and just draining the blood out of the legs into the body, it kind of refreshes the blood, and that's very relaxing as well. Um, so all of these things are worth looking into. And there was a gentleman in the orange. Gentleman in the orange? Oh, right. uh, yeah. Um, when you mentioned sort of colour therapy and chakras, uh, essential oils for all the coming dog bottles have got a colour, and you can. Okay, I use them for you know treating the the, the chakra that's concerned. Mm. Yes, well I've got yeah, quite a few friends that work with the different oils and things and um, we definitely found them to be very good on our travels um, in Egypt and other countries which are a bit hard on the constitution sometimes. So yeah, essential oils and uh, essences and things I definitely recommend um, people looking into if they're drawing in that direction. Anybody else with thoughts or contributions? What did you think when you discovered the link between Jesus of Nazareth and Osiris? doing so much, uh, sort of born on the 25th, son of a virgin, and there's about 25 or so other religions or isms mm -hmm. that are the same sort of thing, they've all got similarities to Jesus. Well, you see in um, Egypt, I think the, the majority of uh, the birth of where Christianity come from, we see a lot of the depictions, um, and of course Egypt, we're talking two, three thousand years <coughs> older than uh, Christianity. Um, and, and they were there, there quite early um, and it developed in that, that part of the world possibly with connections here to, to Glastonbury I mean there seems to be a connection with Egypt and, and Ireland and, and England so these things have transitioned but yes, yeah I mean Christianity, the more I kind of looked into it they do seem to have kind of assimilated a lot of these ideas and, and one researcher I saw kind of put it well was that as the Romans conquered different peoples, they would assimilate their sort of spiritual or religious practices so it didn't alienate the populations that they were invading and taking over. You could still um, celebrate your festival, but it would be um, under a different name. And that was a, a good way of integrating cultures into the, the uh, Roman Empire. It all links back to sun worship anyway. So the son of God, Ra, the sun. They're all the same religion that keeps popping up. Well, I've, one of the clients I represent is Gregory Sams, that you, some of you have probably seen, uh, wrote the book Son of God, S U N. Um, he talks about the consciousness of the sun, because the period of Akhenaten, which a lot of people may have heard of, where he was kind of bringing it into the forefront, this sun worship, but it was the uh, divine light, it's the, the light of life. Um, Everything that we're eating has been nourished by the light from the sun, whether it's a vegetable or an animal, and we're then assimilating that. And, and of course we feel so much happier in the sun. So um, if we're talking about it in terms of consciousness, as he does, then there is um, consciousness in the sun and in our planet. And it might be something we're not aware of on a, a daily basis, but think about how small we are. Could we perceive something with a consciousness as great as of the sun from our little perspective? Might be arrogant to think we could. <laughs> That's the ego though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Manifest within us, isn't it? Well, we like to think we know it all. Is there an arm coming up over here somewhere? Talking about yoga and practices like that made me think of um, the freer aspect of movement. So dance practice. Uh, not learning specific steps, but just mm -hmm. moving any any energy that is causing pain is stuck energy, and just bringing it into movement, particularly through different rhythms, like the practice of five rhythms. I don't know if everyone knows this practice, no. but it just takes you through like, flowing rhythms, chaotic rhythms. So anything you're denying in yourself, you're encouraged to bring out mm. and clear it, and it's it's just really empowering. Really. So that, is that your kind of way of just letting go and being in with yeah. music and in this kind of still yeah. and space? Again, again there's no, no equipment really needed, it's just, it's just movement, as simple as moving or singing. You know? mm. Well, I mean that is part of um, the reason to bring the drum, because I'm not a musician or anything trained like that. But 
time at these um, sites, I think it's given me kind of more awareness of what's in my heart because we're all very, we are creators, um, all of us. And if we if we tell ourselves, oh, I'm not a musician, I can't, then we won't. But if we just uh, give it our shot, our best <coughs> shot, quite often we might surprise ourselves. I know I've surprised myself. Um, and then if we get into this space that we're, we're talking about where it's just coming out and we're not consciously thinking about it, it's definitely an amazing feeling and feels, feels great. So yeah, it's important that we all find um, the ways to help ourselves. I mean, that's why there's so many options out there. But there's, there's some things that can have a real tangible effect and that's kind of what I've been trying to integrate. But I think that was a good suggestion. Thank you for sharing. Ah. I, um, one of the things that I wanted to add about the sound is one of my revelations is the universe and the universe, mm -hmm. so we all sing together. And one of the things that kind of fell on my path at the moment is this, the Rainbow Warrior prophecy is we all sing our songs and, and pray our prayers and do our ceremonies. I was like, wow, we don't know any of our songs. Mm. So, and I think my revelation is we've got to kind of make our own. So, I mean, how would you feel about how we'd elaborate on that or where would be our starting point to kind of make our own sacred songs, as it were? Well, I think there's two sides to that. My research is more of going down the, the use of the vowel sounds, which is what we use in um, sort of yoga, kundalini yoga, the oms and the ahs and the oos, which um, is also something that the, the druids use today. Um, I know when we've been chanting at Stonehenge, they're, um, they're sort of I-O-U, is that right? Are they used? Arwen. Hmm? Arwen. Well, I think we did an I and O and O, that kind of recitation, which is very similar. Um, so there's power in, in those sounds, and of course it's, so then it's the intention that we can set before using it. Um, it's definitely a tran there is a tran trance dance to five rhythms. It's, it's like it's almost like it's in enchanting where you kind of put yourself in this trance state, and the, the ums and the oohs are vi very vibrational. But there's also the kind of like party aspect where it's the uh -huh. everybody comes, you know, you, everybody knows when you're in a, 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 a an, an event or whatever, when the music comes on, you can't help but to dance. Mm. I think that's kind of like where we need to, in this celebration. Dance idea rather than this boring kind of I'm too spiritual to have a good time. Oh yeah, I'm not subscribed to that. Yeah. I'm going to be down there have some fun. And the, from my experience, the universe isn't particularly serious, it's got a good sense of humour, so I don't know why we need to be trying to dull about it. And uh, But I liked your idea about creating our own songs, because certainly um, creative people, and if, some, if, so, if it comes out of the heart and it's shared and it felt good to us today, for example, somebody wanted to make a contribution, singing together is definitely a good thing because certainly at this, this point I mean, there's just been terrible things in the news so just anything that we could do to send a bit of um, love or, or a bit of our hearts towards some of these people suffering around the world uh, wouldn't be a bad idea today because that's all any of us can really do isn't it we can contribute what we can because if everybody does that then a lot of these problems in the world are going to go away if we're all giving out something positive. So yeah, I would like uh, our own songs. I was at a concert at uh, Deva Premel in London, and that was the first time I'd been with sort of six or 700 people chanting together, and, and it was incredible. I mean, the effect of chanting with that amount of people lasted, I could feel, feel it inside for four days. Um, you sort of enter these very deep sleep um, points, you wake up kind of feeling that you've been doing a lot of work and there's these things happening inside you so we not, might not be able to understand it uh, through the rational mind what is the connection between using this sound and how is it helping us but if we listen to our intuition or, or just become aware of um, how we feel then we know on a deeper level that we are we are doing something good for ourselves on the top of the sound um, and frequency and vibration. And you're saying about modern music. Um, how much about this four, three, two hertz? This in nature's I've, frequency. Yeah. yeah, I've got a few friends researching it, and I do seem to be getting nudged in that direction yeah. to 
So there's heard another heard one for me. <laughs> music, so you say party music, the whole festival, is all the music's at switched to 432 hertz mm. rather than the um, four four four, yeah. yeah. Because isn't the theory that they've changed their music in the last 50 years or something yeah. and so the yeah. frequency that the music's at doesn't resonate in us as strongly. Some Germans and I don't know the connections through that way decided to. Yeah. But if we're just using the drum and chanting or something, I mean we're gonna, we will find our natural rhythm but so I don't know what the comparison because I'm not going to try and get us chanting at an American uh, <laughs> music producer's tone <laughs> but yes I will take that as I definitely need to look a bit more into that <clears throat> um, what helped me lately uh, was communicating with water and Speak up. communicating with water and like water in everything, in plants, and trying to tap into the West information, it's scary, and, and like getting closer to all the plants or anything in nature in a different level, just being still with the plant. Or are you telling me what you enjoy doing, or are you asking me to talk about it? No, no, I'm saying like <coughs> suggestions. Mm. So, in that sense, communicating with water really. So, have you looked at the work of Dr. Omoto? Yeah. Yeah, when he does the kind of puts the intentions into the wall. So, I mean, he's been kind of doing the rounds and he's been with Truth Juice and he's coming yeah. back, isn't he, soon? I think he's amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has anybody here done uh, an experiment like that themselves? You know, is Emoto the only one that's done it? I mean, is it, is it, you know? To freeze, because he freezes, doesn't he? So you can look at the crystal. <laughs> okay. That's I, his. But I'd want to, I'd want to charge something myself and then look at it. You know, is anybody doing that? A friend of mine has frozen water and done it with just putting water in a, in a plastic cup and put it in the freezer. And he says the ones that he said negative things look more spiky. Mm. So without a, mic that. without a microscope, mm. it just looks sharper and more spiky. So just visually by eye. Yeah, just by yeah. eye. So yeah. have a go and post it on on um, the Truth Juice groups and mm. share everybody's re research. If somebody wants to take that, please feel free and put your post pictures online. Or well, it's got. So, I mean, in my mind, it has a logic to it. If we're seventy to eighty percent water, doesn't it make sense to be consuming the best water we can or treating mm. this water with the utmost care because it is that's what we are basically water flesh covered you know this is a container for water <laughs> the long way of looking at it so, so um i mean our uh, piping system and things are not as advanced as they were using two to three thousand years ago they used to have this kind of positive spin going through the ancient pipes which we can still see um so we're treating it, it terribly yeah, I just wanted to add to this thing. Uh, there was a some school kids did an experiment with just growing plants with water that yeah. one lot had been blessed and the other lot had been cursed, and the yeah. plants that with the blessed water just did brilliantly well by comparison. And it's such a simple experiment, and the kids did it. And, and the, plant, the plants them. with the mu with the cursed water were really quite mutual. Oh yeah, they? yeah, It wasn't yeah. just they didn't and do well. Is that something that's flying around on Facebook? It was mentioned because on Facebook. Because I, yeah. I, I did, I think me or one of my friends, we went and had a look on uh, Hope Slayer or whatever, and it came up as. You know, it always so you will, have to go out and do things ourselves. Well, it's easy enough. Just get yeah. some, get some plants <laughs> with just any kind of water, and then get some. The best ones I've seen, because I've seen some people do the stuff like that, that not with words, but they, yeah. they did. They brought up one load of plants on. I think they just used tap water, mm. and the other load of plants were brought up on water that had been microwaved. Yeah. And it's absolutely yeah. bang to rights. Yeah. You know, it'll work every time. I guarantee it. Yeah, they did it with cell phones, with cell phones as well. Yeah. Mm. It's an easy experiment to do, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, easy and cheap. Yeah. The seeds are easy to come by. Well, that is the next thing to do with the water. Because I don't know if you were in um, my presentation when I was doing the water. How many people were in the presentation? Oh, yeah, that should have been the question. Yeah, because I had... I to so in that, in that uh, dem slide that you showed, uh, you said that the temperature of the water was actually rising? That was what he said. I haven't... Somebody's told me to look at that, but let's... 
As far as the water goes, guys, John Bide's doing an amazing presentation <coughs> later, or maybe he's going to go into the water on Sunday, but he answered a lot of questions for me about the vortexual energy of water, so he's well worth looking up. You have to get out really close because it's going to start bubbling. Here's the bubbles in the water just by it. So you got water in the pot? Yeah. And you're vibrating it? And it happens very quickly, but yeah. it's, it's so faint that anyone can see that at the back. I can't even see it here. <laughs> no. So but it's something, it just, something we could have demonstrated if we had, you just have to put four litres of water in the bowl. Um, so this was, this is what I discussed earlier when we were looking at these ancient sites in Egypt. So they had huge crystal bowls, bigger than this table, and they had a hole in it, but you can only assume water was coming out. And, and so I came to the conclusion when I was walking across the desert looking at these, this site, which is close to the public, but whatever they were doing with water, they'd realise that there was a connection between our life force and soul and the quality of the water in our bodies. And if the, hot, the higher the quality of the water in our bodies, the greater clarity of thought and the connection to our souls that we can have. And so they were uplifting the vibration with crystal and then drinking it. So that was how we ended up putting water in a crystal bowl to see what happens. And of course it immediately starts bubbling into the middle and jumping out of the pot after a minute and um, so we, we drank it that was the purpose of the exercise it's like well if it's really true let's see what happens <laughs> and this guy um, that was actually doing the bowl who normally gets to sleep at like 11 or 12 he couldn't get to sleep till 4 or 5 in the morning because we we're all it was like we'd done something pretty strong it's like whoa <laughs> so yeah it has a, a profound effect so does that actually add oxygen to the water do you well think? it must because it's all bubbling, so it's jumping out. Oh, it's just out. like ozone, in it? Yeah. 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 What was that question? Though? Yeah. Um, if you want to do an experiment, we've got some Glastonbury well water with us. If you want to try to see if there's any difference between ordinary tap water and spring water. We'd have to clean the bowl if we want to drink it, though. Yeah. <laughs> and you drink it at your own risk. I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> he takes your chances. I think that's satisfying my insurance company. Yeah, yeah, that's good enough for us. Yeah, we're not covered. Well, 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 well. well, you can do it in your own home if you feel the need. Oh, Self responsibility. And uh, I mean, it was a new title for the workshop. This idea of um, transitioning from our kind of everyday intellectual mind where we're trying to make sense of the world because that's the, the real tool that we've educated isn't it um, but those of us that are trying to get into this kind of ritual in, intuitional space I've started to look at how you transition from the intellectual mind to the the intuition intuition because it's not like you can just turn off the rational mind and then turn your intuition on there is a process and this is where ancient ritual is um, as relevant as it today as it was back then so we need to have our uh, modern process and again this ties into what we've been talking about what works for you I mean if you can get into that space and this kind of greater connection it is um, truly life-changing so we need we need to look at the kind of practices that we're employing um, and try different things to try and get into this place of the stillness and sound is definitely a very powerful effect so late, later on anyone that wants to we come up and we will feel the sound vibration coming off of this bowl and that vibration you can feel coming through the body and this bowl's tuned to the third chakra so quite often if someone was, if you were sitting around it you would hit, feel this whole area of your body vibrating and um, sound healing is, is capable of getting in into our physical body and kind of disturbing this stuff that we hold on to and then you, you can kind of um, you can work with an intention go to a sound healing I want to get rid of something whether it's a, an emotional connection to somebody that's unsettling or, or something that's disturbing you you could work with an intention like that or just open up to it and, and see what kind of flows through your uh, rational mind because there might be a few things coming up and uh, gong baths how many people have been to a gong bath? Um, anyone care to, to say how they felt after a gong bath? 
not fear yeah. anything off, off to it. <laughs> oh. washed, it washed all the chakras. It had all the notes. Mm. <coughs> in, the whole, in the whole sound of the garden. And was it enjoyable? Amazing, it's total healing. Because mm. normally when I'm a, a gong bar, you you kind of feel this uh, vibration of the sound coming flowing over you. Sometimes I start to feel and it like where I quite often have a sort of block here. It seems with my yoga postures, I kind of feel all this energy moving and and releasing. And you can get into this this point of just uh, being conscious, but also very close to sleep. So it's just this really deep sense of relaxation, um, which has many benefits. And so I'd, I'd recommend anyone that hasn't tried that to go to yeah, a gong bar um, and they're very easy to find around England and, and a lot of the Western world or uh, crystal bowl healings. I mean, I'm, I'm no expert with these. I've got one bowl. I've got this um, last, last year because um, normally I'm, I'm toning at the ancient sites and using these kind of ancient places. Uh, I have a question. This is the crystal bowl. Um, but uh, what about with uh, Tibetan singing bowls? Could you treat water? Yes. Yeah, I think there's a video on YouTube of them doing something similar. Um, that is probably one. I mean, I like, I'm very drawn to Tibet. I, that's uh, my kind of main spiritual pilgrimage of my life, I think. I'd like to do the pilgrimage to Mount Kailish. Because, I mean, if you look at the, um, the planet, it's almost like Tibet and Northern India has, has been the remaining library of this kind of information. They, they do still do levitations and things out there using sound. Um, we lost it in Egypt, they burnt the Great Library. The um, Spanish burn it out of existence in South America, so we kind of lost most. I mean, there's, there's small piece of information in the hands of the indigenous, but in the mass consciousness of the world, we've lost a lot. So we do have to look at, um, I think, what's in Tibet and Northern India, and that's certainly what I'm doing, combining these kind of spiritual practices with these ancient sites around the world, and it's helped them come alive. So yes, they're, they're good those bowls as well. You spoke about being sensitive to energies, <coughs> especially when you're in places like London. Mm -hmm. You said about coming home and cleansing. How do you go about doing that? Um, well, the Palo Santo or uh, sage is the easiest way. You know, the white sage you can buy? Because the purpose of that is, you know, you use it for shamanic ceremony to cleanse the body first. Um, even uh, just a bath, I think, I mean, there's things in our energy field that we're not aware of, but water, I mean, that's the practice they used to do when you go into the Egyptian temples, you would go into the sacred lake and bathe and cleanse this stuff off. So there is effects that we're not consciously aware of, most of us. So yeah, a nice bath or shower, um, sage, Palo Santo, whatever, incense. <laughs> I personally like the, the bowl. It's a very direct thing that we can all, all feel. Um, so any of those practices that resonate with you, I would recommend. Uh, you know the gong baths and the uh, crystal bowl healing, like the way the water bubbles in the bowl, is that, mm -hmm. is it sort of like a form of uh, cymatics? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, sort of like the way all like... You can, land. if you get a certain pitch, I mean I've seen shapes forming in there, but of course it's under constant change. So if you kind of get into the space, you can see all of these shapes forming. Um, so it's very interesting to watch, but normally as I'm the one doing the bowl, I'm kind of having to look at my hand or just keep an eye on it, so it's difficult to focus in there. Um, but if, I don't know how much time was I supposed to do? Um, it's finishing about one o'clock, but you did start about ten minutes late, so... Does that mean I get ten minutes longer? Uh, you can, unless, unless there's really hungry people. Uh, yeah, leave. the hungriest will move first, is my <laughs> Well, I think we're getting to the kind of practical implementation time now. Um, so that was the kind of intellectual side of what I would have liked to do. I think we've got my drum player. Just give us what you got and we get kind of just to, to sort of relax us and um, enjoy the sound of the, the drum. And then I'll do the bowl. And then as people sort of come up and you can feel the vibration when I do the bowl later if you want to. And then if we want to put water in it and see what happens, if we've got enough, we can do that. <coughs>
deep breaths are good. Anyone can feel free to come up and just feel the sound comes out kind of like that. <laughs>
Legacy of the Etruscans and the Pulaski, so plenty of variety after lunch. We've got a whole hour and a half for a bit of this.